Here we go. So we're taping this with the HD camera along with being live on Periscope uh, because that is easier, an easier way for me to get the video up uh, onto YouTube for you all so you can see. Um, like I said, I'm not sure what to paint. I do have my large watercolor journal here out. <clears throat> with lots of um, artwork in it. Um, one of the suggestions this morning was a butterfly. I've actually done one in here already. Here we go. These are all on YouTube in the Watercolor Wednesday playlist. So if you guys have any suggestions, you know, let me know. I would... Um, I do need to finish this journal. I need to do some more work in here. Firefly. Uh, I don't know what they look like. <laughs> I don't know what they look like. That's the problem with Firefly. I live in California. I don't think we have Fireflies. I could just, I could do a bumblebee. I did a bumblebee in here, but... That's the last one that we did, the poinsettia. There's a bee, or fly, pyramid. Dragonfly, we could do a dragonfly. This is just a mixed media piece. This is, um, yeah, you know what? Let's do, let's do something in the big book. I'm going to leave this activated because I need to work on that and finish that page today. Let's get the Daniel Smith colors out. I just got back from the gym. I'm smelly. Be glad this is not smell-o-vision. <laughs> dragonfly. We can do a dragonfly. We'll do a dragonfly. I'll do it without a reference photo. So, you know, hello. I don't know how well it's going to turn out. We'll find out, right? We're just going to play and have fun. So the first thing I always do is get my whole palette wet. <clears throat> now these metal palettes, you can lift this whole tray out and you can actually use this bottom as a mixing uh, area. As you can see by how pristinely white it is, I never do that. These are Daniel Smith watercolors before anybody asks. I know somebody will. <laughs> I'm going to put my brushes in some water. I've got my rag. I've got our big journal. Zoom out a little bit on the HD camera. There we go. And let's go to the end here. And let's put some protective deli paper here. Not that I care too much if I get splatters on the opposite page because I'll just work them into my journal page, but we'll try to keep them at minimum. Trying to make sure I've got that. There we go. The whole page in camera, which we do. So, of course, when you do this, you know, whenever you're playing with any kind of paints, you could do realistic dragonflies. You could do um, more illustratorly or doodly dragonflies. Um, I have no idea which, which ones are going to come out of my pencil, but we're going to just find out, right? It's best, of course, to work from a photo. All of my devices are currently in use <laughs> for this broadcast, so I have no idea. So we're going to just wing it. You get it? Dragonfly, wing it. Ha ah, ha I know. I'm just totally not, I just, I'm trying not to have a third cup of coffee. You guys, it's a really bad habit. Because if I leave it up to my own devices, I'll, I'll just drink way too much coffee. It's not good for me. So I'm going to draw the body in a couple of sections. You kind of have the main body area and then the, you know, dragonflies have that long, like, tail. I don't know what you call it. They have two sets of, like, long, skinny wings. Yeah, uh, me too. And my parents are like that. They love to drink coffee. So in this case, especially when you're not sure of, you know, um, your drawing, your shaping, your shaping of your subject matter, if you're, you're not confident um, where you want to go. There's nothing wrong with doing a pencil sketch first before you get started. 
And although you're seeing it pretty well on camera for what, from what I can see, I am actually using a number of light pencil strokes. This is just a standard number two pencil. This is one of the Faber-Castell jumbo pencils. Um, which when my hands are, you know, achy and bothering me from arthritis, um, is easier for me to hold. I like the way it feels in my hand. So I'm just going to pencil in my basic shape here. If you guys have any questions as we're going along, you know, go ahead and fire away. So I would always do things in sets of three. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that. I think three is more interesting than one or two. So I would put a couple more dragonflies on here. They, I would try to make them so they're not, you know, all the same size and shape. Oh, I didn't even touch my iPad and the picture's all flip, flipping around by itself. It's just, you know, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> so good morning, everybody. Did you all get your exercise in yet today? I did. That's why I stink. <laughs> I haven't had a shower yet. It's Periscope. You know, I wish they'd work the bugs out. Holy cow. Thanks, Cindy. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> and yes, I was talking about the 6 Plus iPhone. I heard, I saw the Facebook message, but, you know, I'm doing this, so I'll just answer your question here. <laughs> it's big. I have the regular 6 iPhone. The 6 Plus is bigger. So we're just sketching in our dragonflies. You know, dragonflies are, the sh basic shapes are, you know, easy. Yeah, that my husband, um, he goes back and forth. He, th he got one, and because then he thought it was actually too big. And now he thinks he probably should have kept it. <clears throat> anyway, so, you know, just a um, circle for the head, some ovals for the body, and some, like, teardrop shapes for the wings. Right? And... Dragonflies have like two sets of like long thin wings and they have, you know, a long thin body and kind of a long thin tail shape, right? Um, and the other thing you can do is kind of, you know, something that's like illustratorly kind of thing to do is, you know, give them, make some dots, you know, that would suggest like where this dragonfly came from or where he's flying to. And before I do too much of that, I want to draw my third dragonfly in. I'm not worried about any of these sketchy lines because I'm, you know, they'll just add. This is a mixed media watercolor journal, so almost everything in this journal has rubber stamping and ink splatters, and, you know, the pencil marks just give, in my opinion, give the page some interest, so. So I'm just sketching my basic shapes for my dragonflies. And we'll get our basic shapes on here. And then if you guys are paying along with me, I'll give you a minute to catch up. And I'll show you another fun way to draw dragonflies that is even easier. Sort of a doodly dragonfly that I've actually done for a long time. And I have the original painting around here somewhere. And it's been reprinted thousands of times on greeting cards and tote bags. And Okay, so then I would take and I would put some dots where each dragonfly was, like, coming from. Right? You get just something that's interesting. And, of course, give them some antenna. Right? And that's a cute composition. The, uh, here's a little scrap of watercolor paper. <clears throat> and the other way that you can do dragonflies, and I'm actually going to do this with a black pen because you'll be able to see it better. 
I should really use a bigger piece of paper. Hold on. <clears throat> Here we go. This is just a standard number two pencil. It's not water soluble or anything. This is just a Faber-Castell Jumbo 2B pencil. You can get these in, I think they came in a three pack and I actually got them at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. I like them because when you're not young anymore <laughs> and you have arthritis in your hands, you know, this pencil is easier to hold because <laughs> it's fat. Okay, so here's just, this is just a blank piece of drawing paper I'm going to show you. So this is the other way I've drawn dragonflies for a long time. Um, and I usually, when I do these kind, because I've drawn them a lot, I usually just use a pen. I don't even start with a pencil, but, you know, do one of these swirly circular shapes like this for the head. And then do sort of a swirly oval shape for the body. And then do a series of circles graduating down in size. For the tail and I'll hold this up to the camera in a minute and then give go ahead and give your dragonfly some wings and again if you, you know I really prefer the sketchy look so I almost never just do a clean straight line like that and and then you can you know put your antenna and you can do a dragonfly that's you know have fun with the sh basic shape of your dragonfly and do something that's interesting and fun on this kind of a dragonfly colored in this is cute on a little greeting card or as an embellishment or something like that All right, so now we need a paintbrush. All righty. Dragonflies are kind of iridescent, aren't they? Start lighter, work your way darker. Um, I'm actually going to start with a color I have called Tiger's Eye. And it's one of the Daniel Smith colors made from semi-precious gemstones. And it's this really pretty, like, tan color. And you can't really see it, but there's a little bit of a metallic sheen to the cup paint. So we're going to start with that. And I'm going to choose to have my light source coming from this way. And the, so the shadows are this way. And then I'm going to come in with some water and just put the water on the inside of the dragonfly's body so that that interior line blends a bit and isn't so harsh, but I still have the nice hard outer line. Thank you for all the hearts. I love the hearts. And, you know, let, don't forget to ask me questions if you have some questions. Oh, hey, Mark. Yeah, dragonflies. And, you know, these we're not shooting for anything that's super realistic necessarily. We're just having fun with the paint and doing something that's shaped like a dragonfly. Oh, thank you. I love art, but art is some of the reason I have problems with my hands. <laughs> Yeah, been doing it a long time, so I have to remember to stop and do your stretches. You know, I was a knitter for a long time, and whether you're a painter or a needlework artist or a knitter, one of the things you need to remember to do is stop every now and then and do your stretches, stretch and flex your hands, roll your wrists, and get up out of your chair and walk around. Otherwise, you just get really stiff. Yeah, so, and there's, 
years ago, Vogue magazine had a whole series of articles on hand exercises for people who use their hands a lot to help prevent carpal tunnel and stuff like that. So I don't know if that can be found on the internet somewhere, but you might look it up. All right, so I'm just you're still using that same color, the tiger's eye. And now I'm, I'm touching some of the paint into where we've added the water and we've done a little bit of blending. And I'm just, I'm barely touching my brush to the paper and I'm just being careful about not putting too much paint. With watercolor, you can lift a bit, but it's harder to um, lift because it's watercolor, it stains the paper. This is a Prince, before somebody asks, this is a Princeton Select Round Number 8 paintbrush. So I'm going to let that dry for a second, and then I'm going to start looking at the wings. And I do think I want to put a little color in the wings. The question is, what color do I want to put? I know that one I'm thinking of. Well, I'm just going to go for it. I'm not going to think about it. Sleeping Beauty Turquoise. Yeah, so it's good to remember to stop and... Um, Flex your hands. Remember to stop and flex and stretch your hands and, and the rest of you. So this is a little bit of Sleeping Beauty Turquoise. And I'm just going to put a little bit. And then I'm going to come in with the water before it dries again on the inside of the wings because I want the paint to stay on the inside of the wings. I don't want it to blend into the rest of the paper and the watercolor is going to take the easier path so it's going to follow the water. It's not going to easily go onto the dry paper unless you put water there. So. Welcome everyone. It seems like people are popping in and out so I'm Wondering if you guys are having problems with your connection like we did the other day. So I'm going to do one dragonfly at a time. And while I'm doing this, I'm also not only starting to color the wings, but I'm giving the bodies a chance to dry a little bit. I hope your phone doesn't die too, Cindy. I know you're having problems with it this morning. I saw that. Oh, you're from San Jose too. Cool. What part of San Jose? Ah, I'm over by Santa Teresa. Lovely San Jose. This morning I was at the gas station putting gas in my car and not only was the crazy homeless man back who screams at everybody, but then some other guy came and um, was digging through the gas station trash cans. <laughs> wow. I thought to myself, wow, life in the big city. <laughs> so before I go too far, I'm coming back and deciding that I want to put a little more color in uh, my wings and I know where that's at. I used to work for American Greetings and I was on the east side a lot for work I like that All right, so now we're going to come down and do this one And I think I just got some other color on my brush and wasn't paying any attention Let's rinse it off and try that again, shall we? Oops. I told you guys I need that other cup of coffee. Aren't you supposed to need less coffee when you work out? I feel like I need more.
So you'll notice me continually like blotting my brush off on my rag because I want it wet and I want to bring in um, some clear water, but I don't want it to be sloppy wet. Oh yeah, I'm on Periscope every single week. Um, so yeah. I'm on YouTube. If you Google my name, you'll find me all over the place. <laughs> Literally. I keep telling people that and they don't believe me until they go and Google my name. So I hope you're all having a great week. So that's pretty, I like the way that's turning out already. Um, let's keep going. So I have some, good morning. What color do I want to add now? I kind of want to add Moon Glow. You all know I love Moon Glow, which is a purpley gray color. Again, it's one of those colors that's um, unique to Daniel Smith paints. Thank you. I love this color. The um, Sleeping Beauty Turquoise is one of my favorite colors in the Daniel Smith line. So this is just adding a little bit of purple to our dragonfly bodies. And I'm going to, while it's wet, I'm going to just listen to my instincts, which are screaming at me to grab this color. This, as you know, is opera pink. If you've been watching me before, you know that I like this color. And the paint is wet, so it's going to bleed a little bit into the other colors of the body, and we may get a little bit that goes into the wings, and I'm okay with that. In fact, I may encourage that a bit. Put a little dash of the opera pink at the base of the wings, and then just add some water. I like that. Thank you. This is just fun, easy, basic watercolors. They don't have to be scary or any of that. Just have fun with your paints. So again, we're going to start with the moon glow. The only thing is when you work with watercolor, you want to remember start with your lightest colors that you want to use and work your way darker. I'm going to go in while that's wet and I'm going to add my opera pink. A dot at the base of each wing. I'm going to come in with just some water and encourage that pink to flow. This large journal, yes, this large journal is um, one I made as part of a class that I have that I teach, a paid for class that's up on Crazy Island University. Um, and up on, I think it's on my Udemy um, channel also. And I actually, when I made this, I intended for it to be, I'll answer that in just a minute, Moonball. So um, when I made this journal, I intended for it to be a collage journal and um, then I just ended up watercoloring in it. Um, so you don't necessarily, um, because this is watercolor paint, it's always going to move a little bit, but if you wait for the underneath to dry before you add more paint, it's going to move less. So usually what I do is I do a fair amount while everything is wet, and then when I get to the point where I'm starting to have the colors be muddy, then I stop and dry everything and then I come back and add more. Um, if you want to leave some layers um, white or I'll, and I'll give you a, a couple options for this. So if you want to leave some areas of your page white then before you do any painting put masking fluid down and then let it dry. Masking fluid is a uh, barrier that when dry, the paint can't get underneath it, and you remove the masking fluid with a rubber cement eraser. Now, you can use masking fluid in layers on a painted page. So say we've already done this, and we like the turquoise, and we want to save parts of that, but we want to keep 
adding layers of paint to the wings. You could add some masking fluid to parts of the dragonfly that you've already painted, let it dry, and then come back and add more colors. That's another way to do it. I almost never do that, but you definitely can do that. Yeah, I actually, the first thing I do when I get any paint is make a color key or color chart. Um, I think that's something you should do whenever you buy new paints, especially watercolors. And I always, with my watercolors, make them so that they fit inside the case. Otherwise, I can't keep track of them. It has more to do with me not keep being able to keep track of stuff and doing things like finding my cell phone in the refrigerator than it does with anything else, to be honest with you. Yeah, I have those, and I definitely, when you get any new watercolors, make a chart. That's the first thing you should do. Because they look completely different in the case than they're going to do look on paper. So just like with the other dragonflies, now I'm coming in with just water. I like that. They are. I like them a lot. Um, I love my Daniel Smiths. They're my favorite, but there's nothing wrong with the Gonzai Tombi watercolors. I love them. Their colors are unique. I think I have the 18 color set. So let's dry this just a second. I want to make sure it's dry before I do anything else. So that's my heat embossing tool, which I almost never use for embossing, but I use it all the time for drying my watercolors quickly. Um, okay, so now we're going to start making things a little bit darker and more interesting. And this paint that I have on here for the most part's dry. So what I put on here may blend a little bit with the older paint that's already on here, but it's not going to do a lot. Um, and I'm going to come in now with, I want to do the wings first. So I'm going to come in with some ultramarine turquoise, which is a darker color. Still in the turquoise range, but it's darker. And I'm barely, barely touching my brush to the paper. Okay, now I'm going to come in with just some water, and I'm not going to blend all of this line towards the middle, but I'm going to blend little bits of it. I'm definitely the kind of artist that likes the lines and marks that I put on my paintings help me suggest the shapes I'm trying to uh, paint. I find that interesting. So I almost never do paintings that are completely well blended. I like the way that looks, so we're going to leave that alone and let that dry a bit. We'll do the same thing to our other dragonflies. And the thickness or thinness of the line really depends on how hard you push down on your brush on the paper. And you'll notice that I'm putting a thin, some, uh, some parts of the lines thin, some are thick, 
I want it to be uneven and sort of suggestive. Welcome everybody. We have people popping in and out. I'm guessing that, like I said, that there's a problem with the connection again. Why am I not surprised? You could actually do this. These are easy. I don't want you guys ever to be, you know, intimidated when, especially when you watch me thinking you can't do this. That's why, you know, I'm glad somebody suggested dragonflies and that we're not doing anything harder because we've been doing lots of hard stuff. And um, I don't want you guys to feel like it's too hard for you to do. I want you to enjoy doing things like painting with watercolor. So these are, these are easy. And look how cute they are. Can't you see these like on the front of a greeting card? That would they would be so pretty. <clears throat> Hello, Andrew. So the other thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to put the antennas in with the same kind of uneven line with the tip of my paintbrush. And I'm using the same ultramarine turquoise. They're cute and simple, exactly. Not all of your paintings have to be super complicated. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the process of painting without the complications of doing something intricate. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like I know what I'm talking about? But that's how, how I think. Easier is better sometimes. Everything doesn't have to be a huge, gigantic, you know, complicated, you know, Rembrandt style painting. No, I don't speak. I'm, I'm guessing you're asking if I speak Russian. The answer is no. I have trouble with English, so. All right, so now we're going to come in like with the other ones. We're going to blend our lines just a bit, not everywhere, just in a few places. Now, the other thing you can do with these dragonflies before you paint is outline them with a black waterproof pen. Um, if you do it after you paint them, make sure that your watercolors are completely dry. So these are those dots that I put on here, and I'm going to just tap some water into them. So that they're there, but they're kind of, you know, watercolory and splotchy and messy. And I like that. I don't remember which one of you suggested this, but thank you, because this is very cool. I haven't done dragonflies in a while. I see a lot of you joining. I hope I didn't miss a comment. I'm kind of getting lost in painting the dragonflies. Oh, see, Tina, thank you. I haven't painted these in a while. I forgot how much I just like just painting something simple like this. And dragonflies are a lot of fun. So you saw me flick my brush at the paper, which um, puts some, you know, splatters and marks of the paint that's on my brush on the paper, but in this journal, I like, this journal is about the splatters and the marks. Fireflies, oh, okay. I haven't lived in the South since I was a baby, but when I was little, we lived in Georgia. My dad was in the army. There is a dragonfly stamp in my rubber stamp line, yes. 
Um, and this is going to be up on, hey, how are you? This is going to be up on YouTube. We are simultaneously recording this with my HD camera, which is going to be way easier for me to get it on YouTube than the um, traditional way, because <laughs> Periscope is just not super download friendly. Um, anyway, so I will have it on there and you can um, review the drawing part. They're really simple shapes. Um, there, Like I said, there is a dragonfly stamp in my stamp line. Now, um, if you're going to use a rubber stamp for your dragonflies, you could totally do that and then watercolor them in. But what I would suggest is that you make sure you use waterproof ink. How do you not just love that? It look, they look like they're just bursting out, don't they? I love that. Okay. So we want to do something to the bodies like what we did with the wings. So I'm going to come in with, um, what color? Um, thank you. They're so much fun. They're easy. Um, I think I'm going to come in with, I'm trying really hard not to use Payne's Gray, you guys. Hello, Lisa. I think I'm going to come in first with some Quidocridone Purple, which is a darker purple, more of a true purple. Try not to stick my arm in things that are wet, you know. I have trouble with that. Okay, so I'm going to put some of the paint on the dragonfly, and then I'm going to come again, come in with water, and just blend it in towards the dragonfly a little bit. I usually do a PDF um, after I get these broadcasts um, downloaded to my computer. I create a PDF of the broadcasts, and in the PDF I do a close-up shot of the page, and I do a copy of my color key or color chart here for my um, watercolor set, and I usually do notes on the step-by-step -step instructions. They'll be for sale over in my Etsy shop uh, to go along with the video on YouTube. keep trying to stick my hand in stuff that's wet. See? So having that bright, almost neon opera pink in there that's going to be your warm color, and that's going to suggest sunlight hitting your dragonflies, right? And the darker purples are cooler colors, so they're going to suggest shadow. And I'm not going to be able to resist myself and put just a teeny bit of Payne's Gray in these. I'm just not going to be able to. Because Payne's Gray is a really dark blue-gray, and just a little bit of it is going to really emphasize those shadowy areas in a more interesting way than uh, using black. I love that. How I, these are just a lot of fun. Need some more paint on my brush. So you could do this on any kind of paper, of course, but you're better off doing it on watercolor paper. This is um, Fabriano watercolor paper, 140 pound, but you can use Strathmore. I use Strathmore a lot. This came in really big, huge sheets that I cut down to make this journal. If you're going to use other kinds of paper, then you want to prep your paper with some kind of watercolor ground or watercolor gesso because the paper won't be able to hold up to all the water. 
it'll start to peel and fall apart. Those are cute dragonflies, I gotta say. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of Payne's Gray to the antennas. I love that. All right, so this is a mixed media journal, thank you. So one of the things I do with this is I usually do crazy stuff around whatever it is I've painted. So let's see here. I have binders full of cling stamps and these are um, all different brands. So let's find one that I like here. That one might work. Let's see. a script stamp. This one might work. I like this one. So I'm going to take this script stamp. I have no idea before somebody even asked me. I don't have any idea where this came from. I've had it so long and it was wood mounted and I've unmounted it. Yeah, I don't know. I have these little um, Studio G inks. You know, they're from the, what, $1.50 bin at um, Michael's. And I'm going to choose, I want it to create some interest in the background around our drag dragonflies, but I don't want it to necessarily detract from them. So I'm going to use something that's a tealy color so that it'll create interest without being a distraction almost the same colors I used on the dragonflies. I like that. And then I'm going to take some of my same color we used down here. Was the ultramarine and I'm going to add some water to it and thin it out a bit and then now if you get some of it where you don't want it just get in here really quick you're not going to be able to get it all off but it'll you'll get mo you'll get a lot of it off and it'll still have a faint a faint dot but it won't be I like that. So I would leave this this way in this book. Whether it was a journal page or it was, oops. Even a painting, this could be framed and hung on the wall. It would make a great um, um, a great print. So let's dry this a little bit. Okay, so now we really want to bring out our dragonflies. We really want them to pop and the background to be there, but not to be, we don't want that to be the focal point. This is a carbon ink fountain pen. I got it on Amazon. And I'm going to come in here into my, it's black waterproof ink. And it's a super fine point. So it's going to add some black lines, but they're not going to be real thick black lines. So you could do this with any kind of pen. I would just recommend something that's thin. Keep your lines kind of loose. 
sketchy. Don't feel like you have to outline the entire painting. Oh, yay! Sometimes the pen doesn't want to write over the paint. It usually writes better under. There we go. So I usually have my rag close by to wipe off the nib. And the other thing is that because it's a fountain pen, the uh, paper fibers get stuck in the nib. So can you see the difference between that dragonfly and like this dragonfly? He's more interesting and stands out a little bit more. You could definitely, like I said, you could do this before you start painting them or you could do it afterwards because maybe some, most of the time I'm not sure I want to do this. So I usually leave it until afterwards and then I look at it and decide if it, I think it needs the extra black lines. And these black lines along with the pencil lines that are underneath will help emphasize my shape. And any kind of a fine nibbed waterproof pen will work. And I, I, I recommend waterproof because then you don't have to worry about whether you're going to do it before or after and if that's the right pen and if it's going to bleed. I just found... Where's that pen? This pen, oops, this pen, which is a stainless steel Sharpie fine point. This is a fabulous pen and you can get them at Target, FYI. And it's a, a Sharpie marker pen. Yeah. The pen just gives it an extra pop. And you know, we're most of you watching are into mixed media and art journaling and um, most of us almost never do just straight watercolor paintings. There's always an element of uh, mixed media in them, even if it's just a little bit of pencil work on the base. So, um, and you know, don't let somebody tell you you can't do that because you're painting with watercolors. That's ridiculous and it's hogwash. <laughs> Just, you know, have fun with it and play. I do. So this is going to be on YouTube later. This is a good time to ask me questions when I'm just doing the sketching. Um, it'll be on YouTube later. Uh, I will be creating a PDF to go with the video um, at the same time. The PDF will be for sale over in my Etsy shop. Um, you can find both of those, my Etsy shop and my YouTube channel, by just going to Yahoo or Google and typing my name in, just like it appears here on Periscope. Um, I'll, so, I'll show up all over the place. Yeah, see, and I, I do too. I love combining all of my things together. Now, you could add other... Um, See, I just love that. You could add other things, like I've got my, I don't know if you all follow me on Facebook, but if you do, you saw last night that I was pulling my silks out last night and putting airbrush medium in, medium in them to make sure they don't like dry up. You could let this dry completely and add a little bit of a, an acrylic glaze on here. Um, yes, I'll answer that question in a minute, Mary. Um, you could put a little bit of uh, Wink of Stella pen on here. Oh, that, and that, as I'm saying it, that's a good idea. <laughs> so, 
So this is a Wink of Stella pen, and this is the clear one, and it's just basically a clear glitter pen, for those of you who don't know. And it's just going to add some glitter to the dragonflies, <laughs> which you guys probably won't be able to see. But it's a nice touch. So this journal is in the book binding video that is on Crazy Island um, University and over on my Udemy channel. This is the journal I made when I was filming that class. And when I made it, I thought it was going to be a collage journal, but I ended up using it for watercolor. That was a nice touch. It gave it just a little bit of sparkle. See, I want to keep going with that. So you can combine all of these things with your watercolor paints. You know, just be aware that, you know, the base paint color, this is watercolor, so if you put anything too wet on it, it you risk, take the risk of things moving around. But grabbing those, you know, other things you have in your cabinet out and using them with your paintings and your journal pages, do that like your Wink and Stella pens. Thank you. I, this is a great journal. It's a great size. I just had this discussion with um, somebody the other day. It might have been in the Monday with DecoArt broadcast. Working big like this is much easier than working small, especially when you're learning. And whether you're doing a simple shape like this or one that's more detailed like this, um, working bigger is always easier. So definitely, and I know when I first started, I started with large journals and they're still my preference. So I would tell you guys not to go too small, especially if you're just starting out, go bigger. These pages measure about 11 inches square, I think. Yeah, they're about 11 inches square. So I, um, and I think my first journal was 11 by 14. <laughs> it was really big. But I would definitely say go bigger because it's easier to practice what you want. This is one of my favorite paintings in this book. It's easier to practice what you want to learn and to, um, um, you know, get used to working with your mediums in a larger format. And uh, yeah, I love the square shape. I did just get the new Square Delusions journal, but I haven't tried it yet. But the Delusions journals are not great for watercolor. Um, the paper doesn't hold up very well. So you really need to have a journal that's made out of watercolor paper. And this is the kind of paper that come in big sheets that are like 22 by 30. And then I cut them down to make this journal. So, yeah, I can understand that, Mary. <laughs> um, and these paper, the signatures on the in this journal um, are long strips like this and that I then folded to make each set of pages. See, you could do this with a roll of watercolor paper. And I don't know how many signatures are in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It looks like there's seven. So there's a you and me challenge going on. I'm assuming that's what you're asking about. There's a you and me challenge swap going on um, with uh, Cindy Utter and I. Um, the instructions are on both of our YouTube channels. You have to submit your mailing information to the email address in the video. And, um, oh, Udemy. Oh, Udemy. That's it. So Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y, is an online teaching site. And I have a number of classes over there. I know, Ella. I told you, Mary. I told everybody, Mary. I feel like I need more coffee. Holy cow. Uh <laughs> Um, so that's an online teaching site that I have a few classes um, at. Uh, and it's udemy.com. 
Um, but if you go over there and search my name, you're only going to find, um, I don't know if you'll see all the classes and I get, unless I give you the direct link, because some of them have really long videos in them and Udemy doesn't like that. Um, but I do know that if you go to my website, ginabarons.com, there's a page that says class available classes. And in that page is a direct links to every single class I teach. I have to go in there today and make sure I've updated it recently because I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure it's updated. Including Crazy Island University, Udemy, the YouTube channel is on there. Everything is on there. And how to make this journal is in there uh, at Udemy. There's a new watercolor course. There is a Hannah Montana journal, um, which is a free course. And there's a couple other things, and all the courses have downloadable video. So it may take you a little bit to download the videos, but they are downloadable. In the watercolor course, when I can and I find that it's appropriate, I download these live broadcasts into the course and give the students in the course the PDF so they can download the video and they can have the PDF for the cost of whatever the cost of the course was. And there's... Um, six different sections already to that course, and that course involves making a small journal. Gaps between signatures. Now see, I have gaps in this one because I intended for it to be a collage journal. So I purposefully left gaps. Yeah, so if you're planning on your journal being a painting journal, you don't want those gaps. So um, what you need to do when you line up where you're sewing your journals is you need to put your lines closer together. I think these were a half an inch apart when I sewed them in. So you probably want them to be a quarter an inch apart. And then your, then your signatures are going to be smack up against each other. But if you intend to put stuff in your journal then you want to uh, leave a gap. Yeah, see, I, I almost always have a little bit of a gap because when I make my journals, I never know for sure what I'm going to do with it. The couple of times I haven't left gaps, then I end up using it for collage, and then the journals are like this and they don't close. <laughs> like the, um, what is it, the big um, drop paper journal is not done yet, but it, it won't close unless I force it to. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to need one giant journal band on it when it's done. <laughs> and don't forget that, you know, you can use your watercolors also. And I'm, I'm not going to do this now because this is something I need to film for YouTube. But um, and I just threw my stamp in the trash. There we go. You can use your watercolors in your journal pages too. Here's one that's already, um, I think this went up this morning. So I created this journal page for YouTube. Um, um, there's a new series coming up, Watercolor and Mixed Media. You can use your watercolors to accent your journal pages and your mixed media pages. This has lots of different kind of mediums on it, but also mo mo a lot of watercolor. Um, so you don't have to just do paintings with them. You know, think outside the box and how well other ways you can use them. On this little journal, that's what that's going to be about this year. And this is my watercolor kit that I don't care if I get. Yay! Um, this is the watercolor kit that I just use when I'm doing mixed media stuff. I don't care if I use acrylic brushes in it. If I get it contaminated, it's not a big deal. So I keep this little kit around for doing these mixed media pieces. When I am doing something that I know is more pristine watercolor than I use my professional watercolors, which is this kit. Thank you so much. I hope I am. And you know, if you guys ever have any questions, comments, or concerns, you want to make suggestions on what you want to see me paint next week, there is, um, you can PM me on Facebook. There is a list, a um, uh, running list in my Facebook group um, for Watercolor Wednesday. Um, uh, suggestions of things that you guys would like to see. So you can go over there and add something into the comments or edit the list and add something in. 
I'm here every single Wednesday unless I have an appointment or I'm out of town. Uh, and we'll just we're just playing with watercolors and using them in our journals and having some fun. And my Facebook group is called A Life of Art and Self-Expression. And it's not only for Watercolor Wednesday, but all kinds of creative life and business and self-expression. So, you know, go over there and join. And I'm on there all the time. <laughs> but you can also, you know, message me on YouTube. Um, you can comment on the video. Ask a question. If you have a question, comment, or concern, leave it on the video. And I will respond to you ASAP. And I'm here every week. You're welcome. I'm, I'm looking forward to being here with you. We did do a simulcast on uh, Monday for Monday with DecoArt, which I also do every other week. And we did a simulcast on Ustream and Periscope at the same time. <laughs> we will probably be doing that again um, in a couple of weeks, but this time we'll be doing it for Watercolor Wednesday. Um, it'll be interesting, so stay tuned for that. I will announce for you uh, when that's going to be exactly, but I want to, I know there's a few people who can't get to Periscope, uh, but they can get to Ustream, so um, we will be trying to incorporate that um, when we can. Yeah, I'm on Ustream, I'm on Periscope, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, I've got my website, uh, you know, I'm all, literally I'm all over the place. There's only a few I'm not on. <laughs> all right, that's it for today, everybody. I am going to clean up my mess, and I guess it's time to go take a shower now, since I haven't taken one since I went and worked out at the gym this morning. I'm always busy. You know, my brain is happier when it's kept busy. <laughs> Nice. Uh, enjoy that Danish, Mary. Yum, that sounds good. <laughs> all right, I'll see you all later. Don't forget to have a great day. Do something nice for yourself. Get out, breathe some fresh air, get some exercise, and play with your paints and have some fun. All right, I'll see you all later. Bye.